Blog Talk Radio. Uh... This is Chris and I'd like to welcome you to this conversation about your Kundalini awakening experience. Um, I would like to to welcome everybody that's in the chat room. I see we have uh, BB, I think I pronounce it. Uh, MJ Anderson was just there, and she'll, she'll probably be coming back. I'd like to welcome Eileen, who is on the telephone, and and my co-host Santara, who is doing things right now. I would like to uh, to ask, uh, I'm going to ask you, Julia, uh, B.I.B., I'd like you to, to let me know and write on the flash chat if uh, the blog talk uh, is being heard right now. Can you hear this? We didn't get a countdown, which they always give us, and, and except for today. So if you can uh, let me know if the sound is coming through okay. We will go ahead and continue, and I won't feel like I'm just talking to, you know, a, an inactive screen. Yes, the sound. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, MJ Henderson. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Some of the private students at this point are, are coming into a uh, – they're, they're coming into the preludes to spinal sweeps, and so today – I'd like to talk a bit about spinal sweeps, but we'll also uh, go through some of the questions that we're that we're experiencing on the uh, on the uh, the groups as well. And I believe Centaur is collecting some of those questions right now. Um, if you would like more information about, oh, there's Elizabeth. Hello, Elizabeth. Good to see you. If you would like some more information, and this is directed to those of you that are uh, that are listening to this in the archives. And if you're a new person to the Kundalini, and this is something, or this is something that you'd like to research a bit, uh, go to the YouTube channel, uh, Chrisum Kundalini, K-U-N-D-A-L-I-N-I, and the first name is Chrisum, C-H-R-I-S-M, and uh, you'll see about 300 videos there uh, that you can peruse freely. There is no charge for, for for this information that we have put out there for you. Uh, another place to get this would be at the uh, Ascension Kundalini at uh, Blogspot. You just put in Ascension Kundalini Blogspot, and uh, that will take you straight to that blog. And, and if you would like to make a donation to our cause, our cause, which is bringing Kundalini information as much as we can into the general population, because so many people are are being trapped by inaccurate information or they're being, you know, kind of sucked into people that are less than honest or have, have, have definite uh, integrity challenges. And uh, because we don't have a profit motive, uh, you know, we can come through much cleaner than those who perhaps are charging thousands and thousands of dollars for this information. Uh, looks like uh, for for some reason it's cutting in and out. Um, so yeah, yeah, it looks like it's not for everyone though. I've got a clear signal here, and and I would like to introduce my co-host at this time, Miss Amelia Santara. Hello. Hi, Chrism. Hi, everybody. And sometimes it cuts in and out in the live show, but it might not show up that way on the archive. So. And um, hopefully not. It's good to be here. It's an hour earlier today here because our clocks went back during the week. So it's not 11 a.m. It's just gone 10 a.m. So good to be here with you, Chrism. And, and as usual, <laughs> and as usual, I would just like to tell people about where they can go if they want to make a donation to support the work that is done here on Kundalini Awakening Systems. And that is www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And on the upper right-hand corner is the Donate button. 
And after that, it's quite simple. Just go ahead and press that, and the instructions are clear. So if that's if you are in a position to make a donation, that is where you can go. Thanks, Chrism, and as always, looking forward to the show today. And I do have some questions organized when you're ready to take them. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. So today, uh, I would like to actually go through some of the more some of the other contact areas as well. The Kundalini Awakening Systems One. Dot com uh, on in in the internet it has a lot of information that we'll be discussing. Some of which we'll be discussing today. Um, you can also go into the Facebook network. We have a group that is called Kundalini Awakening with an exclamation point. We have a Kundalini Awakening Systems Two, and we also have Kundalini Healing on the Facebook network. And we have on the Yahoo network we have Kundalini Awakening Systems One at Yahoo Groups, and we have Kundalini Healing at Yahoo in the Yahoo Groups area as well. We're also on Google Plus with uh, Kundalini Awakening exclamation point. And I believe that is about all the all the networks that we're on at this point. I would encourage any and all of you who are listening to this information and enjoy this information to spread this information. Get it on Reddit. Get it on all these different places. Tumblr, I guess. Um, um, do your best to spread this around. This is why we're doing this. As many people, we, we want to keep, we want the psych wards to go out of business, basically, when it comes to Kundalini. Uh, if we can do that, and then then our job is, is we're, we're happy. We're happy to do that because people, that means people are coming into a very clear understanding of their Kundalini and what they can do and what they might, might need to do in order to find their balance, in order to find their way. And this is in no way supplanting what the Kundalini itself within those people might be doing. But this is, this is in tandem with the divine energy that the Kundalini is, the divine consciousness of the Kundalini. And speaking of divine consciousness, this is, this is what we're going to be talking about today, the, the spinal sweep and some of the prelude of symptoms that can happen during the spinal sweep. I just got off the uh, the Skype with uh, with one of the private students who is having some of these very very uh, pronounced preliminary phenomena that occurs as you begin to enter into the divine union. And let's make no mistake, that is exactly what a spinal sweep does. You become at one with God. You are at one with God and by virtue of that, you are at one with all of, of the creation of the divine. Every rock, every leaf, every animal, every bacterium, virus, mushroom, fish, every, every little plankton floating in the sea. And then everything that is off of this world is too. The stars, the quasars, the black holes, the, the white holes, all of the beautiful, beautiful Amazing creations of divinity. You are at one with all of it. God becomes at one with you, and you become at one with God, and there's that complete and total merge. Now, it's a life-changing event. It changes you permanently. Uh, gives you a completely different level of understanding about why you're here, what you're here for, uh, what the purpose is, what there is for you to do now, what there isn't there for you to do, what is important and what isn't important as far as your spiritual evolution on this world. And many of the... Uh, uh, it's getting better. Oh, good, good. Many of the, uh, the experiences that a person will have uh, during the spinal sweep is unspeakable. It is, uh, it is not able to be put in words and, I, and it's just because words are so limiting you know i'll do my best uh today to be able to bring some of that into a uh, a verbal um, um form of understanding but i just want you to know that no matter what i do today and right now with regards to describing the spinal sweep as i as you know this divine union it doesn't even come close to what 
the feeling is into what the experience actually is. Because as I say, it, it is beyond the human language. The, uh, it is beyond the human brain to be able to even put into language. But I will do my best, and, and hopefully it will get some of the concepts across to you. Uh, many, some of the prelude uh, symptoms to a spinal sweep will, in, will include a lot of heat in the spine, also a lot of movement in the lower spine. Uh, for me, I was able to, I was really able to, to breathe. I was able to do like a form of cetacean breathing or breathing out the top of my head. Uh, I think uh, Stanislav Grof and his wife, they, they might call that holotropic breathing, but they, you know, they add a bunch of unnecessary things to it. Um, that was something I was able to, to, to squeeze the sphincter and feel energy shoot right out the top of the head. I mean, and then to be able to pull that energy back with an inhalation. And so you literally are breathing through the spinal channel. And, of course, this is stimulating the Chitrini channel, which is the channel that the Kundalini travels up within the spinal cord. Uh, as you feel this heat, as you feel this movement in your tailbone or at the base of your spine, as you feel, or, and maybe you'll see lightning flashes behind your eyes in a dark room. You know, you go in, say you go into a closet and, and uh, you keep your eyes open and you'll just kind of see a bunch of light activity, a big light show. Uh, for you behind your eyes as you as as the the kundalini begins to stimulate the pineal gland or the sixth chakra or the third eye as people like to call it and uh, you know this will also be experienced shivers of pleasure may circumnavigate your body meaning they'll start at a certain area and every uh, hair follicle will begin to dance all by itself and 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 differently than 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 its next door neighbor. I mean, it's almost like they come alive with their own individual consciousness. And in many ways, this is uh, part of the feeling of the electric little electric snakes, you know, going around the body, or electric ants, electric electric insects that that people have described uh, going, you know, in and around the body. Uh, this is very 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 pleasurable. This never ever hurts. <laughs> If it's hurting something, something else is going on. Uh, this is leading up to that spinal sweep. This is lead, leading up to that great cataclysmic moment, that interior eruption, explosion of merging into the heavenly consciousness, into God, into the divine realm. Um, another thing, you may, you may find your feet beginning to hyperarch themselves. Uh, uh, your tongue will, will be plastered to the top or to the roof uh, behind the upper front teeth of your mouth. Uh, you may hear a lot more of the, uh, of the sounds in your ears. You may feel the golden helmet very pronounced uh, upon your skull following the hairline or what was the hairline if you don't have that same hairline anymore. Uh, it will still follow those, that hairline. You'll feel like you're wearing a bowl on your head even though you're not. Um, many, many, many levels of of symptoms can occur. They're not all going to be the same for each person. They're going to be very, very different. Um, so yeah, I want to I want to open this up to any questions. If anybody has a question about a spinal sweep, uh, I'd like you to go ahead and uh, call this number three four seven. That's a United States area code, 347-934-0026. And you can call in and ask about a spinal sweep or any other aspect of your Kundalini awakening experience. The spinal sweep, uh, when it does come, will definitely blow your reality. Uh, you, you will not be the same person after this occurs. Seriously, not the same. Uh, you will be, if you follow, say, a classical model of, of, of the Kundalini, in your own unique way, you will have levels of bliss that are verging into levels of, of, of ecstatic bliss. And when the, when the actual merging takes place, your body is thrown back uh, often into an arch, and you're literally having 
what would be, you know, the, the biggest grand mal seizure you could ever have. Uh, but it, it doesn't hurt. You don't bite your tongue. You don't do any of these things. It's very, very safe, and it's a natural, natural extension of our human evolution to have this spinal sweep occur. And uh, you'll definitely feel the chakras opening wide open. Bam, bam, bam. I mean, really, it, it, it's very, very tactile, and it's very quick. It's very, very quick, and and uh, you feel that radiance erupt from your fontanelle, the top of your head, and then and then you merge into the all that is. You merge into that that divine oneness. You feel the connection of everything in 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 creation. No matter what dimension, no matter what form it takes, you become at one with that divine source. And as you become at one with the divine source, it changes how you are as a person. It brings in levels of information that, uh, you know, before that you were absolutely not aware of. It brings in level of knowingness and levels of grace and levels of extreme love. Extreme love. And, and this is where people will have the... Uh, the beginnings of their of their Messiah, uh, what what the MDs would call a Messiah complex, but this isn't so much a complex as it is a. It's kind of like a, a divine uh, gift. You be because you have merged with the divine, and the divine is merged with you. You're forever changed, and the divine definitely wants this information about Kundalini to come out, and so people will. Uh, People that have really had this happen within levels of, of uh, shall I say, without without a religious uh, compulsion uh, or or a uh, a compulsion towards uh, uh, giving the reason for the spinal sweep something that it isn't. Uh, the people that come out of this are very very blissed. Uh, ecstatic, and they can walk around for months and months, or just weeks, or even just a few hours. It depends on the person, uh, and this can this can frighten the family members around them. They, they'll just they won't be acting normal. They'll be way too happy. They'll be way too serene. They'll they won't be maybe their usual argumentative self or defensive self or victim self. They'll, they become very clear and they become very cogent to who they are and how they need to be and, and what they are and what the people are around them. And, you know, many of the divine gifts come in this way as well. And, and so you begin to know about what is happening and you just begin to go into forgiveness because there's really nothing else for you to do with regards to being around the unawakened as you awaken into the divine reality. Um, it's a huge event. It's a huge event. It's an earth-shattering event, and I mean that literally. No longer are you the same person, and and uh, you know these, this 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 initiates an incredible level of change upon the person. It doesn't mean you leave your family. It doesn't mean you quit your job, but it might. It might if the kundalini doesn't like you damaging yourself. Let's say if you work at a at a, as an automotive mechanic or something like that, you're dealing with with uh, damaging solvents and and gases and and every day, and it's hurting your body. It's 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 really ripping your body apart. Well, two things may happen. One, the kundalini may just have you quit, and uh, and because you'll have this spinal sweep, you will know that trusting in God is the most important thing that you could possibly do, and so you don't have that big level of worry. The other thing that can occur is that the kundalini may see that it is important for you to continue that job, and it just begins to to manifest a, a level of healing that no solvent and no gas and no no amount of uh, chemical or, 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 or polluting substance can can give you any damage at all. So you know these things do happen. Miracles are absolutely real, and and the kundalini is the progenitor. Of miracles on this world and, and within the human system. Uh, so once again, I'd like to uh, the, give you the number. The United States area code is three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. So after the spinal sweep occurs, and it's unmistakable, by the way, you, you won't have any question about what has occurred. 
Okay, you won't be able to go. You won't be thinking, well, um, I well, I kind of sort of, you know, felt something, you know, move. And no, 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 it's it's bombastic. It is not subtle at all. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm certainly not trying to speak in, in absolutist terms. And you guys, I think most of you know who are listening how I feel about absolutism. Uh, but my experience with it and the, the, uh, the experiences that I've uh, worked with other people that have also had it, uh, it is life-altering in a huge, beautiful, wonderful way. And it definitely puts people on a, on a healing track. It puts people on a helpful track, a way to assist society uh, into paths that are, that are more grace-based than, say, greed-based, and more grace-based than, say, violence-based. Uh, it really begins to help people feel what is appropriate for them to do or not do. And, uh, and even, even these prelude symptoms, you're, you're already being directed before the spinal sweep to do that selfless service for other people, to, to sit down and notice that you sat next to someone on the bus that looked like they were having a hard time, and you take that person's and you do the prayer for them right then and there, silently. You give a prayer to the kundalini to help that person in whatever way the kundalini feels is appropriate for them to be helped. And maybe you keep that prayer for that person for the next three days, doing it again and again and again, and just just so that that you have that level of of, of, of helpless helpful service towards humanity. Uh, and these are also uh, symptoms that are 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 previous to a spinal sweep, to that that merging with God. And so, many 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 symptoms can occur but don't be afraid if you have this and if you are if, if you do feel like this is coming on to you and you need to talk to somebody to somebody in person you can go to to the skype and you can uh, you can uh, you can add me as a contact uh, my skype address is chrism.kundalini and uh, you know just let me know <laughs> let me know that you're going to do that you can do that by contacting me at my email at k fire Four all that's K F I R E F O R A L L at yahoo.com. You can reach me there, or you can reach me on Facebook at Chris Mitchell at uh, Facebook on the Facebook network, and uh, and we'll go from there. So if you have any questions about this, give us a call three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. And if you have ah, oh, I see Julie's here. Hello, Julie. Good to see you. Um, if you have any questions about, uh, you know, any aspect of your Kundalini awakening experience, your journey into the divine, um, feel free to, to talk about that as well. You don't have to stick with the subject. We're open to any of the Kundalini-based subjects. Uh, looks like uh, we have Her Holiness uh, Ro Rosemary online, and I'd like to give her a chance to make some announcements. Here she is. Hi, Rosemary. Hello. Hi, Kristen. And thank you for this uh, beautiful topic that you're speaking about. It's very moving just to hear it. That's not my experience uh, so far, but I look forward to that and in my heart to desire that union. So thank you. And my announcements are here in Minnesota. At the request of the last seminar, we now have a Another seminar scheduled that is February 21st and 22nd, and Kristen will be here the week before doing talks, and also between now and then in uh, the first week of December. So those events you can see and read about on Facebook events uh, and seminars with uh, Kristen. Well, so, thank you. Thank you, Rosemary. And I just want to say to you, that as you continue to do your practice and as you continue to do the good works that you are currently doing uh, to humanity, that, yeah, this will definitely be coming your way. Um, it's just, you know, a certain amount of, of gestation needs to occur for people. And, and uh, you know, not everybody is on the same timeline. And so you don't want to compare yourself to other people because there is no, com 
It's in, you're incomparable with other people. And so don't you worry about, you know, if somebody has it right next to you. It's because their karma, you know, has reached that point where they can have it. Your karma will also reach that point where you will also have this divine merging. Okay? Yes, thank you. All right. I, I, yeah. Go ahead. Go I, ahead. Go ahead. I do have that trust because of your teaching me. Well, I don't think I would have that um, understanding and belief if I were not your student. So well, I'm grateful. Thank you. And if you didn't, if, if you if you didn't already have the Kundalini active within you, it can be very difficult to kind of to uh, imagine how that might be. Uh, but you have it, Rosemary. You see, you're in the activation stage, and people who are in the activation stage are in that lineup for the spinal sweep. And one of the questions I think uh, came to me, and I think it was, I think we may have discussed it last week as well, is that, you know, what's the difference between an awakening and an activation? Well, an activation is leading one towards a spinal sweep, and the awakening is living with it afterwards. So, so you're, you're, you're climbing this mountain right now, Rosemary, and you, you, you're, doing, you're, you're taking all the right paths. You're doing the selfless service. You're helping other people. You're providing a space for the, uh, the Kundalini community in the Twin Cities area of Minnesota to come and meet, as you did just night before last. Yes. She had, Rosemary had, I think, what, uh, 15 people, 14 people over to her house? Uh, there were 10 of us. Ah, 10, 10. And, and we did a Skype conference right there, so every, we were able to, to communicate really well, and we did some uh, kundalini exercises. We, we had a sacred male and a sacred female. Hello, Julia. And, uh, and we, we were able to do some very, very good work. So just so you know, when you come to one of these conferences or one of these seminars, it's not you don't just leave it at the end of the seminar and that's that unless you want it to be. Communities are being formed. Communities are being set up, and communities will be supported by the Kundalini and by those that have the Kundalini. So, for instance, we have the uh, the, the the February seminar coming up in Minnesota, and so you know some of that com- some of those community members will be able to join the first seminar, and then we have the seminar in in Port Townsend with uh, Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez, who if, if you want to. Uh, to attend that one, you can go ahead and uh, look at uh, Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez. She's on Facebook, and uh, she'll, she'll be happy to give you some information there. That will be on May 9th, uh, 2015. And then we also have Magdalene de Deus, who is setting up a seminar in Switzerland. And, and uh, even though that, that date has not been set, it's probably going to be in late August uh, 2015. And so, you know, feel free to come to these events. Feel free to participate in a Kundalini community. And, and Rosemary, I would like to thank you for bringing, bringing the Kundalini events into your area of the United States. And I'll go ahead and put you into the blue right now, my dear. I think. There you go. There you go. Okay. Uh, If you have any questions about a spinal sweep or any of the prelude symptoms that can come to a person during the spinal sweep, I want you to feel free to to call in and ask. And I notice Santara wants to come online, so come online, my dear. Hello, Chris. Well, no, I have some questions here uh, whenever you're ready to take them. Just let me know. Okay. Well, then, the first question is, with the approach of Halloween, All Saints Day, and Dia de la Muertos, Day of the Dead, we are reminded that the veils are thinner between the realms at this time of the year. Sometimes people go on tours of graveyards or haunted places, go hug, you know, ghost hunting, or perform certain rituals to help or to honor their ancestors. How might these things affect a Kundalini active person, if at all? Could you speak, um, speak about this, please, in the Kundalini context? Well, in the, in the Kundalini context, um, Day of the Dead, basically, you know, it happens in the, in the fall or in the autumn. And, and this is when things, you know, the harvest is in and the, and the, the plants that gave of themselves so great, graciously for our survival. 
they're dying. Things are dying. Things are, are, are the earth is being renewed by the, by the death of the plants and the fruit that has fallen from the tree and, and the, the ground is absorbing that life force and it's growing rich in these nutrients as, and, and fecund with regards to, uh, the amount of, of, uh, of life and prana that is being put into it by virtue of the death. And so, you know, as, as you know, a primitive human, you know, would see this. This is the, this is the time of year when, when things die and, and winter comes and the, and the great sleep begins to blanket the world. If you're in the northern or southern hemispheres, uh, the, the tropical regions don't really have that, but the animals still recognize it there. For instance, in, in the Amazon basin, uh, snakes still have a hibernation period. Sun may be shining, you know, it, it whatever, but the, uh, the snakes will go into hibernation and, and you won't see them for a number of months and, until they wake up out of their hibernation and they come back into the land. And so even in the tropical regions, we understand and the nature understands the time for a, a period of rest, a period of death a period of renewal and the earth builds that renewal by having cycles of life where things begin to die and they fall into the soil they fall into the earth and the earth is one you know revitalized through that gift uh you know this ties into the whole immortality question uh, that i know was being discussed on the uh one of the facebook groups and so during this time, this ha- this Halloween, the harvest is in. Everybody's happy, hopefully. And uh, you know, here in the United States, you know, people are dressing up in different scary costumes because death is associated as a fear. Uh, death and and the idea of a ghost or the idea of a ghoul or the idea of a of a monster that is there to provide the the pathway into death. If, if you're so foolish as to to uh, you know put your head in the lion's mouth, well the lion will greatly assist you along that path, and as would a uh, you know you know many of these different uh, paranormal creatures want to make you think. Now the, to to get to the uh, the meat of a of Centaur's question, what happens to a person that is having Kundalini? Uh, as they participate in some of these scary rituals that people love to do to titillate their themselves, to give them a mild scare, or to to give themselves a major scare. Well, with Kundalini, because the 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 fabric of the veil that separ- separates us from uh, the greater reality and keeps us, you know, you know, encased in this five sense reality that is really just a it's like a uh, uh, what is that little thing that they give the ba- a pacifier? This is a pacifier reality. We're being given a pacifier reality, just like as we we put that pacifier in a baby's mouth and it sucks and sucks and sucks, even though it's not getting anything. It's still pacified it, and it's it's able to to withstand its hunger until uh, mommy or daddy gives it uh, some feeding. And so, what we're being what is being done with us here is, you know, in many ways, this reality is a pacifier reality for us as we go through the many different uh, exercises and experiences that allow us to have spiritual evolution on this world. And as you come into the Kundalini and the fabric of the veil is thin, uh, you may get a lot more than you bargained for, certainly a lot more than what your friends are going to get. And, I wouldn't necessarily do this. I wouldn't go see a horror film at all. Do not do this. You know, unless you want to become the the star of the show uh, in a literal sense, uh, to you, literal sense. I mean, nobody's going to be, you know, um, sawing you in half or, or, or things of that nature. But it will seem that way. Uh, Kundalini can make things very, 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 very believable. Uh, Even though it is not in reality happening to your physical system, you'll think it is. And that's enough. Just the thought of that is enough to scar the ego and scar the mind 
in a way that that really uh, can put you into to a, a severe crises mode. And so I will strongly suggest that people do not do that, but I know people will. I know people will. And, and within that context, if that is your plan, well, first of all, I would I would steer you away from any of the witchcraft type types of things. You can dress up like a witch. That's fine. Uh, the pointy hat uh, has a has a resonance with tall figures that uh, come to people in the kundalini, that have the kundalini, or, or they're in a in a peri kundalini, pre kundalini type of uh, of uh, experience. And the, the these tall hat they look like tall dark sorcerers, and they're ba- basically there to scare you to pieces, and they're there to harvest the fear that you generate as as their presence begins to terrify you. Um, you can dress up as, you know, Casper, ghost, lion, you know, gypsy. I mean, all of these things, it's perfectly all right. Most of the time, it's just, it's really fun just to get out there and have a good time. You don't necessarily have to turn it into a metaphysical event. With with Kundalini, metaphysical events are every day. You might want to take a break on the Halloween <laughs> if your Kundalini will allow it. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, with regards to going into haunted places, cemeteries, graveyards, uh, and doing a sacred ceremony, well, you know, you're you're just kind of you're setting self you're setting yourself up for a an attempted possession. Uh, you may see this or that, but you may not see it, and it just may glom onto you, and there you go. You have a you know you have a parasitical uh, possession that is now that can last for the rest of your life and into the next life. So it's 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 something for you to seriously consider if you have the kundalini so i would say for people like like say fast you julia or edg um you know people uh certainly uh julie um probably not the best idea not that you would i'm not suggesting that you would but right now because of uh, you know the the level of activation that is going on through you it's best to keep yourself in a very happy and a merry mode and so dress up as a fairy princess um and even you fast if that strikes your fancy uh but you don't have to i mean you can you can dress up as as uh, a, you know um you know the, the the king of kundalini you can walk around you know i mean you can you know akhenaten or you know somebody out of the history books or a cowboy or whatever i mean you have fun with it don't go into this stirring of the witch's cauldron uh witchcraft is often associated with wicca wicca is often associated with placing spells on people or you know identifying with nature spirits or trying to trying to work uh, uh through magical uh um means uh, ways to to get yourself something for little for little or no effort a way of uh uh, you know, reaching into the into the uh, the spiritual realm or the astral realm in order to accomplish a certain goal. I would not recommend that either. Uh, I would recommend that those of you that are on the path of the Kundalini to stick to that path. Do not let anyone move you from it. Do not let difficulties in life move you from it. Do not let uh, successes in life move you from it. Always stay balanced within your Kundalini awakening uh, adventure and really, really begin to see how you, through your surrender to this force, can really begin to manifest the positivity, the love, the communication, the trust, and the devotion that the Kundalini can bring into a person. With regards uh, to to the Halloween itself, you know, go bobbing for apples. There's nothing wrong with that. And if you live in a in a in a city that has a history of violence, or you know people putting razor blades in fruit, or you don't necessarily want your child to be partaking of LSD, you know, in their tootsie roll, then go to these malls and you know go to these places where you know a bunch of families gather together and the kids get to see each other's costume, and they may not knock on somebody's door and go trick or treat, but at least they're not going to be you know coming home. 
you know, you know, floating on the ceiling and trying to figure out a way to get back in their body uh, or damaging, you know, being, being hurt or damaged in some way. Uh, also, go up to the door with your child so you can kind of see what they're getting, you know, if you're in a neighborhood. And, you know, go up there with them. Don't sit in the car. Go up there with them, you know, just to make sure that things are going okay. Uh, yeah, I don't ever recommend people do these experimental things with regards to uh, the uh, the paranormal within a kundalini context. But, you know, outside of a kundalini context, it's perfectly okay. I mean, I remember I was doing it uh, when I was in my 20s. You know, I was going into Yosemite and I was going to a, a haunted area there, the Pahono region of Yosemite and where the Native Americans would say, oh, don't go there, don't go, oh, no, no, you know, stay away from the Pahono wind. And so, of course, that's directly where I went to stand right in the Pohono wind, me and friends, and we'd see what was occurred. And then there's the the Awani Hotel there is haunted on the fifth floor. So, of course, we go up and we hang out on the fifth floor. And I had an interesting experience up there that uh, at another time I go, well, I don't know. Do you think it's appropriate to tell of my experience there, Santara? I think she went to the bathroom. Yeah. Hello. There. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> yes, I <laughs> I think that will be interesting, Prism. All right, all right. For people to hear. So, had a, had a, a couple of friends interested in the paranormal. Had this one woman friend who was very interested in the paranormal, and and uh, I had we had just I had just told her about the fifth floor of the Iwani Hotel, which during World War Two. Uh, had been used as a as a psychiatric treatment facility uh, for people coming back from from the Second World War, and uh, a lot of people died there. And uh, so she wanted to go up. So we went up. We went up the elevator that was designed that the that the uh, uh, <laughs> the, the color of blood. Um, I forget the the Jack Nicholson movie. Uh, uh, where the little kid's going, red rum, red rum. Uh, it was just like that. That that hotel set was modeled after the the Awani Hotel in Yosemite. And uh, The Shining is the name of the movie, The Shining. Anyway, so so we're going up the elevator. We get off on the fifth floor. And I was, I've always been able to see entities. And so I said, oh, there's an entity standing right over there. And as soon as I said it, that entity jumped right into the girl, right into that woman, and she was just shocked. She was she was shocked. She was almost paralyzed with fear. She didn't know what to do. She could feel it going into her womb and 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 stirring around, and it's just like, oh, geez, you know. And and I was I was kind of given a don't go into the elevator now. And so we went. We we took the stairs down, and and. Uh, I just knew I had to get her outside, and I wanted to see if I could uh, put it into a tree. And, uh, you know, and she was just kind of like in a daze now, and she was just kind of like stumbling across the floor. And so we got her out of the hotel, and, and uh, you know, I started to head for this, you know, a beautiful pine tree, and I was going to put that entity in a pine tree just by virtue of of uh, having her touch it and, and, and helping it along. And then I saw the shaft of sunlight break through the clouds. So beautiful. It's just like those paintings, those oil paintings of this beautiful shaft of sunlight right next to us. And I said, oh, stand in the sun, open yourself, let the sun take it. And it did. She stood in the sun and the entity left into the sun, able to continue its evolutionary journey. For some reason, there was some sort of a hold that the hotel itself had on that man. And uh, and the man just needed to get clear of the hotel and into the sunlight. And as soon as he did, he was gone. He was gone. It was a very, very cool event to experience. And uh, and so welcome to my, my uh, mid-20s, <laughs> to, to the, uh, the pre-Halloween type of thing. And, and uh, for the most part, all of most of my life has been towards healing in one way or the other or helping out. And maybe that is the way it is for you too. Now I've had plenty of other scary things. I've, 
you know, ghosts are real. And, and uh, regardless of what science says, I mean, I don't care whether science can measure it or not. It's just, you know, maybe they need to get a little better with their technology. And, and you know, instead of, instead of being, uh, you know, condemnative of people that are having psychic uh, experiences, maybe they can just upgrade their technology so that they can do what they're, their thing, you know, measure it and, and uh, try to control it and try to dissect it on the table or whatever, you know, scientists. You know, um, but yeah, yeah, ghosts are real, and I've had more than one experience with them. And, uh, you know, it's all good. It's all part of the experience of being, you know, within this five-sense reality. And um, it's not all bad. I mean, you know, some, yeah, some, some ghosts have done some pretty gnarly things in their life, and they're being paid for it. And that is also there for us, too. I mean, if you go out and you start slaughtering innocent people, well, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have a problem. And, um, uh, yeah, it looks like uh, Julie used to live in an old funeral home that had been divided up into six apartments. (laughs) Oh, boy. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. That'd be great. You know, you may as well just camp out in a graveyard. Um. So, yeah, uh, the paranormal is real, and it it is out there, and it it is, in many cases, it's there to scare, but for the most part, it's there to teach. It's there to teach you the the lessons of evolution, the lessons of divinity, and uh, for the most part, people that dabble in these things outside of an old home or in a graveyard or anything like that, for the most part, they won't really see that much or experience that much unless they're in an altered state, which, you know, a lot of people be out there smoking marijuana or, or taking ecstasy or, or alcohol or mushrooms or, you know, whatever. And those folks will have definitely a uh, an experience, uh, whether or not it will stay with them for the rest of their existence is, is debatable. Hopefully not. But uh, for some that have the kundalini, it can stay with you for a long, long, long time. And so for kundalini people, bob for apples. Take your kids door to door. Go to the mall. um, Stay away from the scary movies. Uh, You know, instead, I suggest that you, you feel what is happening to the earth in your area where you're living. Feel the energy of autumn. Feel the energy of of the mass mortality of plants and fungi and and uh, these aspects of the earth that are that are replenishing the earth and giving themselves to the earth and the earth is beginning to to grow colder in some regions and is beginning to to initiate that great sleep until the rebirth occurs in the springtime, much the same way as once we die and our bodies are absorbed into this world, whether through the ashes of a, of a cremation or through the burial of a body, you know, as, as, as we move into our next expression, we too will have that springtime of rebirth so that we may continue our spiritual journey and our spiritual evolution towards the divine uh, the divine merging, which is what we as Kundalini people are all about right now. This is what we are all about right now. So for some of you that are coming up to the spinal sweep, it is the death of your mundane experience. You are in the autumn of your mundane experience. Your five-sense reality is dying. And it is going to be, uh, your, your essence is going to be rebirthed into a communion with divinity. Your springtime, your inner spring merging into your inner summer. Okay. This is what's happening to those of you who like Rosemary and like, uh, you know, Elizabeth, Fasci, Julia, Julie, and uh, MJ, Amelia, Eileen. You know, just these are just the folks that I'm looking at right now. 
Now these, this is your time right now. This is the August, shall we say, or shall we say the October. This is the October of your five sense reality. And some of you may say, well, geez, that, that left a long time ago. Well, still, there's, there's always a level of dying and awakening, of dying and rebirthing that is occurring in the human body. As the cells die, new ones are, are developed. And, and as, as you go through your kundalini process, certain ideas and understandings and statements and, and reasonings and logic will just die away and become replaced by the divine understanding based upon your kundalini experience. So there's just a little bit about how I feel about Halloween and haunted houses. Don't do it. Don't do it if you're kundalini awakening. Bob for the apples. <laughs> Go to a costume party. It's much more fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I'd like to announce that Amelia Santara is having a, a costume party at her house. When is it? <laughs> I'm not saying. Am I all right? <laughs> <laughs> Next you're, Friday. You are, you are having one, right? I am, that's correct. Yes, yes, yes. It's on Friday, um, This Friday, Halloween night. Wow, how cool. Yeah, yeah. And my house is, is decorated in fun ways. And also, you know, there are there are some stuff up because, you know, the children love the witches and all of that sort of thing. So, yeah, that's there too. But... um. So I do not dwell. We do not dwell on, on those aspects, really. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It should be fun. Excellent, my dear. Next question. Okay. It seems as though with the awakening of each new chakra, it will flow back to the prior one and then back up again, much like the ocean with the tides. Does the kundalini energy tend to rise and fall as one ascends? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean... You know, one, and this is this is more of the activation state. This isn't exactly after the spinal sweep. Uh, once the spinal sweep occurs, your chakras take on a different uh, energetic expression. But before the spinal sweep, yeah, uh, so let's just say in the activated state. Say you've gone to uh, the seminar, or you, or you, you know, you you somehow you've activated your kundalini and. You may feel it at the first, and it may rise all the way up to the third, and then it will drop back down to the first, and it'll only come up to the second, then it'll drop back down to the first, then it'll disappear, and then it'll come back, and then it'll go up to the second, and then down to the first, and then up to the third, and then down to the first, and then up to the second, and down to the first, and then maybe up to the fourth, and so on and so forth. Uh, certain amounts of energy can be given to a person at a certain amount of time. Okay, it's it's like, how do I put it? Uh, we exercise our body uh, little by little. Our bodies allow us to form muscles little by little. We don't go from, you know, a 90-pound uh, 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 strength-challenged person to a 180-pound, you know, uh, you know, weightlifting Olympic gold medalist bodybuilder. We don't do that in a day. It takes time. It takes practice. It takes uh, it takes the the gentle, consistent um, nurturing of the kundalini to activate that chakra, then recede. The chakra should only receive a certain amount of energy at a certain amount of time, and then the kundalini pulls away, knowing that it's its gentle qualities. This is how the energetic anatomy is nurtured. This is how we build the muscles in the energetic anatomy. It's not something that we just poof, you know, and, and we're, we're, the, we're, the, we're the muscle bound person. And not at all. It takes gentle encouragement of the chakras. And here's what happens. So as the kundalini, you know, is, is activated in the first chakra, then it moves up to the second. A person gets to burn off some of that karma that's stuck in their first and stuck in their second. But, you know, we don't want to meet all that karma all at the same time. So the kundalini doesn't stay there. It pulls back. 
lets you deal with that level of karma. Then it comes back in, you know, and it activates it a little bit more than it pulls away. Okay. Hi, everybody. Looks like Chrism has actually left us. He has vanished from the switchboard, so he's not live on air now. So I'm just going to go over to Rosemary. Yes. Hi, Rosemary. How are you? Will you just give out again the information about the seminar, the times, and and that sort of thing while we wait for Chrism to phone in sure. again? Sure. Yeah. Thanks, the Rosemary. The seminar here in Minnesota, and it was it is scheduled at the request of the seminar that we had just a month ago, and that's very exciting to realize too. So it is February 21st and 22nd. It's a Saturday and Sunday, 9 to 5, and it is the same place we had been. It worked out very well for us to be there at the Best Western in Egan. That's right at 35E and Yankee Doodle. Very accessible. It um, Yes, Saturday and Sunday. And then Kristen is coming the week before, so Saturday before, I think, is February 14th. Now, um, the opportunities for him to speak around the various parts of the cities was a, uh, just a, a great experience for a lot of people last in, a, a month ago, and it will be in February as well. And then and out of the request for the seminar, and we weren't able to do it before February, that um, Christmas is here uh, in December, like midway between now and then the first week of December, December 1 to 8, and likewise he'll be here giving talks. And particularly for people listening from the area here or when Chrisim comes to your part of the world, know that as people think, what, well, what will I get in doing a seminar? Or It's like they're looking for a learning. And, and I at first fell into telling them what they're going to learn, and that's not the question really. What happens when you're in the presence of Chrism, even in my listening here on on the web radio, it happens that the Chrism as a person of high Kundalini energy that is radiating all the time, so that in a seminar or in a even a, in a talk where he is present and talking, that that his energy is radiating out to me sitting in the chair. And my kundalini, in wisdom and love, receives what it is of of Christian that I am able to receive and prepared for. And so it's all within the the bounds of safety for each person, but and very very tender loving and care of our kundalini. But that is what it what it is to be in the seminar. That is why there are seminars, why we have asked him to come back, is that is providing all of us, whoever is, is coming, and as well to the evening talks, that it will be uh, receiving the kundalini energy uh, radiating from the teacher and receiving, again, very particularly uh, what is best for me. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much, Rosemary. Excellent. I think Chrism is with us again. Chrism? Well, first yeah. of all, <laughs> did, you, did you kick me off? <laughs> As if. <laughs> no, when you leave, I go into a state of panic. So, no, I did not kick you off. <laughs> what happened? This is a blog talk. I'm sure it's a blog talk. Yeah, it does that. You, you just suddenly stopped. I just sent you a Skype message saying, you are not on air, just in case you, know, you didn't realize are, it. <laughs> my eyes are closed. I've been doing this full-on stream of consciousness. I know, I know, I know that, because I know when you're in that place, you're speaking from that place. I was thinking, Chrism could still be speaking and have no idea. You know, you wouldn't be aware. So I, what, if you get a what, couple of, you know. <laughs> where, where, where did it stop? What was I saying? <laughs> um, I can't remember because, you know, the panic at you leaving has completely blocked out what happened before that. Anybody, but, um, anybody tell Rosemary, us? tell us, do you know? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> 
Well, then it doesn't matter. I'm sure. Nobody's, I'm sure nobody's even paying attention, huh? <laughs> I'm afraid that's what it looks like. but it's- No, it's because it's something like what you were saying, Rosemary. When you're speaking, Chris, and this happens to me all the time, when you're speaking, as you move into that, you know, you call it the stream of consciousness, for me anyway, I also am in a very different place, and it's being, it's, it's going into my ears, it's going into my being. And, and, and so, you know, it is there, and I have absorbed it, and I know it. But I just cannot at this moment tell you, tell you what it was. What you were speaking about, though, was the question of, uh, what was even the question? <laughs> oh, it was about the chakras, wasn't it? And about the kundalini energy rising and falling um, in the awakening stage and then, you know, in the activation stage and the awakening stage. That was the topic, oh. at least I can say that. <laughs> Hi, Kimberly. So, Julie, Julia, Elizabeth, Fasci. MJ Henderson, you guys have no idea what I was saying before it just I stopped broadcasting. Yeah, kind of said she was talking about all the talking. energy. <laughs> no, I just don't. <laughs> Kind heart says here in the on, on the chat room he was talking about how the energy rises and falls. Thank you, kind heart. <laughs> Lee, you guys are all sleeping out there, aren't you? Except for kind oh, heart. Gosh. Flash T is typing. Yeah, here he comes now. <laughs> I'm sorry for those of you listening in the archives. Sorry. Flash T said he was in the restroom laughing out loud. <laughs> I thought I heard a toilet flushing. Okay. <laughs> Do you wish me to uh, ask another question? You have no, fairly... No, I'm, with this. I'm, I'm a little pissy I now. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me see. Um, oh, no, no, I'm not done. There was a, okay, there was an interesting question. Um, well, interesting or not, this is the question. Can Kundalini keep you forever young? Can Kundalini stop the aging process? Well, let me get back to this other thing. So Julia is saying that I was talking about, yeah, I remember talking about that, Julia, and, and, and all that, but God, I was, was I gone for like how long? How have I gone for you? Oh, I know what happened. You were still talking, so you're wondering where did you stop? Where did we stop hearing you? You were gone for five minutes. How many? Four or five minutes. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, hi, Suka. But you have well, spoken quite a we did hear. No, you were asked that's, that's telling a lot us about of information. That's a lot of information. No, that just you were out. after explaining and speaking about, you know, the difference between the activation stage and the awakening stage with regard to the chakras and how the energy rises and falls and and that. Oh, somebody has written here. You were talking about the chakras in a prelude to a spinal sweep, how the energy rises and falls and clears out karmic issues slowly. Well, that's just going to have to be what it is. Let's go with that next question. Okay. I'll say it again. Um, it, was, it was on the same question, really, from the same person. Can Kundalini keep you forever young? Can Kundalini stop the aging process? I remember that question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think... No, no. Okay. Kundalini does not keep you forever young. You will be allowed to age. You know, these questions are really based in the ego fear of death, you know, the ego fear of growing older, the ego fear of not being that pretty 21-year-old or that handsome, strong 21-year-old. You know, we're such a youth-oriented society that we've lost the respect that comes with maturity. We've lost the appreciation of maturity, and we've replaced it with this, this longing, uh, this desire for eternal youth. You know, the fountain of youth. We don't want to grow old. We don't want to have gray hair. Oh, my God. You know, where's the hair color? You know, we don't want to to, to learn what it is to, to, to age and to, to be that leaf that flutters off the tree and is buried into the soil. Uh, we don't want that. We just want to be young. And we're, we're so afraid of the unknown that death, death is this constant paramour of fear that comes over us. I'm keeping my eyes wide open right now just in case it stops somehow. 
Um, oh, wow. Yeah. So, so we're we're very we're very tied into to this eternal youth fantasy, and the Kundalini will not allow that to continue, and it certainly wouldn't allow it to continue within the within the understandings of the ego that uh, is my voice warbling. It's it's, it's just my vibrato. I have this vibrato when I talk, you know. It's just, uh, no, it's actually chrism. It's fine again. It was there for a few moments. It was, but you're fine now. It was like you were going, blah, 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 like, but it's fine. It, <laughs> Sorry. It is entirely, just take me out of the bathroom, please. It's echoing off the walls. Okay, so. No, I. Uh, now, yes, the kundalini can extend your life. There's no doubt about it. But it's not going to protect your vanity. It's not going to protect the... It's not going to not allow you to mature. Uh, it knows that you have this this quality that's being uh, supported by a, a society that is, that is youthful-oriented, that is oriented towards not aging towards not ever you know you know they have this anti-aging thing in medicine you know so, oh don't age oh well this is what you have to do to take care of those terrible wrinkles around your eyes oh my gosh don't get a crow's foot on your eye don't you know don't have a have a don't let your breast sag oh my gosh you need to put this bag of salt water inside and that'll keep them up nice and high i mean you know this is this is this is if you look at it, you know, it's kind of silly. We must age. Our bodies are in tune to this earth. This earth has seasons. We have seasons to our lives. Our lives are not perpetual youth. We would we would learn very little. I mean, think about it. I mean, if you're perpetually 21, I mean, come on, how how uh, <laughs> how ignorant can you can you want to be? I mean. Oh, but we want we want it all. We want to have the youthful body and still have our our uh, our mindful experience, our experiences in life. We just want to be able to enjoy what it is to be a youth again. And um, the Kundalini will not will not support that type of an ideology. It will support an ideology that is more in tune with the world, more in tune with the reason why you even have a body in the first place. You have a body for spiritual evolution. Okay, You don't have a body for physical evolution. You have a body for spiritual evolution. Part of that spiritual evolution is to mature, is to have those crow's feet, is to, is to learn how to, how to do something you know, that, that takes a lifetime to learn. It's how we, we develop wisdom. It's not all about, you know, having, you know, big muscles, a cute face, and, and, uh, and uh, you know, many of the other physical attributes that a young person has that a, that a 40-year-old may not have or a 70-year-old may not have. I'll tell you what, I mean, I wouldn't really want to go back to being 21. I remember how I was then. <laughs> you can have it. You can have it, but no, the Kundalini will not. Uh, it, it is capable of committing the fountain of youth to a person, but it it won't do it simply because of the fact that you're you're spiritually evolving. The body is being used for spiritual evolution, and part of that evolution is to learn what it is to to grow older, to learn what it is to have wisdom, to learn what it is to be able to evolve from being an infant to an old man or an older woman, okay? We do not, we are not allowed to, to, to fall into our level of egotistical desires. Kundalini is not about supporting your fears of aging. It's not about supporting your fear of not being accepted because you're not in your 20s. It's not about, you know, keeping you young and desired by men or women because, 
because that's what you that's how you find a way for self validation. Not about that. I'm still looking for myself getting switched off here. Um, yeah, watching that closely. <laughs> uh, so no, no, it can it can do it though. If you're the type of person that has that particular karma where where you you know this this part of your evolution is to is to have that endless existence, then it will occur. No, no doubt about. It. There are immortals on this world as we speak. Uh, some of the giants, uh, some of the uh, what the uh, the Irish people would call the furbolog, you know, they're still around. You know, they're just a step in another direction dimensionally, and and you know, there is immortality. Immortality is a fact. It is a it's not a scientific fact because science can't measure it yet, but it is there. But it is not for the typical person. Having the Kundalini, no, no, no. You, you, you're going to want to have a few more lifetimes with Kundalini before you, you're going to be going there. Okay. Um, look at what is the causation of wanting to live longer and wanting to be youthful forever. What is the cause of that? And that alone will begin to formulate answers for you about why you need to grow older, why you need to have gray hair, why it is necessary to be a grandma and a grandpa, why it is necessary to be Santa Claus or Mrs. Santa Claus, why it is necessary to have the wisdom elders in our society. Because I'll tell you what, pretty much everybody under 40 is so busy fighting them, fighting each other, that we need to have the wisdom elders just so we we have a place to, we have a person that we can go to and say, why are we fighting each other all the time? And the wisdom elder can say, well, it's because you, maybe your priorities are a little out of whack. Okay, we need our elders. We need to learn how to appreciate our elders. Go into a convalescent hospital. Start visiting people. I have students doing this right now. And they're learning all kinds of beautiful, wonderful levels of information and wisdom. I tell you what, I mean, these convalescent homes are centers of wisdom. <coughs> I'm going to invite each and every one of you, all of you listening on the archives, all of you listening right now on the, uh, uh, on the computer and, and, and listening live, Go and visit people in the convalescent home. Get over the smell because they really, you know, the doctors make those places smell horrible. But go in there and start setting up friendships and relationships with people that are like 70, 80, 90 years old. These people have wisdom. They're not all Alzheimer's patients. They're not all having, you know, dementia. Some of them are exceptionally vital and, and wise and can really help you with maybe some of the problems that you might be having in life. So Kundalini wants you to evolve. It doesn't necessarily want you to be 18 your whole life. Okay? <coughs> but don't, don't be fooled. Kundalini can give you eternal youth if that is what it wants to do with you, if that is what your karma says for it to do to you. <coughs> Excuse me. So that can occur. It's just not typical. Next question, Santara. Hello. And hello, I'm here. <laughs> Somebody has just commented how on the chat room I used to work in a nursing home and it was an incredible learning experience. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, and, and and MJ says, laughing out loud, you can come visit me and check on my wisdom. I think <laughs> MJ is over seventy, so Yes, will do. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. the next question, the next question is: Doesn't there come a point, though, after realization or enlightenment, that you don't need an outer master when you are uh, your own when you are your own master? Well, let's see here. Let's see. Um, I'm going to go right back over here. Oh no, I'll go right back over here. Hang on a second, folks. Okay, not that one. <coughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna read the answer that I gave to that question. Oh, I could never get to that group. Uh, 
Yeah, because I want to. I don't want to to, to uh, go from the answer that was given for that. Uh, I mean, yeah. <coughs> uh, I actually have it. If you want me to read it out, Chrism. Go ahead. Okay. So the question was, doesn't there come a point, though, after realization or enlightenment, that you don't need an outer master, you are your own master? And Chrism's reply was, yes and no. Yes, because the connection to the divine is more in place. No, as the appreciation and love and connection to the earth and the mortal teacher doesn't receive, but is given greater levels of love and understanding. These questions are very helpful, and I wish to thank you for them. The questions echo a quality from the ego about who or what is in control over the student. And it is indeed the Kundalini that is in control at all times, even when the student is unaware or afraid. Trust in the living teacher as given from the Kundalini is very important. Trust in the wisdom of the Kundalini as it begins to transform the levels of ego control as the student shies away from giving themselves into that teaching process. Kundalini, as an energetic consciousness, is easy to trust, not so much with the living teacher. So therein, for most Western people, is the challenge. Trusting the Kundalini is the most important factor, and that includes its assigning a teacher for the awakened person. Well, there you have it. That's there you have it. Yeah, the, and you know that that really goes into like who has control over the student? Is it the you know is it the corrupt guru? You know, which is you know the the worst case scenario, or is it God or the Kundalini? And and frankly, you know, if you're if you're within a true Kundalini awakening experience, then the Kundalini will find you that teacher. It will find you that teacher and it will expect you to to work with that teacher and and to give yourself into the Kundalini and into the Kundalini teacher that I mean I was just saying that um to one of the private students I was saying, you know, one of the one way that you really want to acknowledge the Kundalini teacher, the flesh teacher, is the first thing you say is 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 you recognize the, the divinity of kundalini first kundalini is always recognized first because kundalini is the first cause it is that first cause and and so within a within a a practice and a and a devotional practice you you recognize the kundalini first and then the kundalini teacher that the first cause kundalini has assigned you uh, and, and so you know you recognize God first, and then you recognize the Master second. That is really what is occurring within, within the, the understandings that I am given from the Kundalini in me. That is also verified through the understandings of some of the people that I'm working with. Mm. Kundalini is, because I'm not very well known at all, and even if I do get well known, it will still be the case that the Kundalini will bring your attention or a person's attention to a specific kundalini teacher and begin to 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 compel them to work with that teacher in whatever way whether it's reading a book or listening live on the air or or, or listening in the art whatever it is the kundalini will direct a person to the teachings that it wants that person to have and you need to get out of this whole idea of corrupt gurus. It's not to say that they're not out there. I mean, yeah, they're out there, and it's a good idea to to uh, to, to to pay attention. But once the Kundalini has assigned it to you, and you're you're wondering, well, how do I know I've been assigned a teacher? You'll feel the correctness of what that teacher is saying. You'll feel the Kundalini in the voice of that teacher. You'll feel the energy that comes through those words that that teacher writes. You'll feel it, and it will be pretty much uh, a clear go for you to begin to to work with this person. So I encourage you to pay attention to what your kundalini is telling you. Do not, do not listen to what your ego is telling you. 
Do not listen to the fears of others. Don't let their ego pollute you. You go in there and you look at it for yourself with your own kundalini. Discern it yourself. Don't be lazy. Discern it yourself and feel what your kundalini wants you to work with. Feel what that, that, that first cause is telling you about any specific teacher. And remember, those of you that are in an activated state, you know, you have that communication with your kundalini. You have it already. It's happening right now. It's happening right now. She is guiding you. The kundalini is guiding you towards the teachings that it wants you to have. And I'll tell you what, it'll guide every single person to any of the seminars I give. And when the book comes out, it'll guide the people straight to that book or not. Or not. Not because what's in the book isn't appropriate. It's just the person may not be appropriate for what's in the book. <laughs> not yet, anyway. So, yeah, okay. Uh, next question, uh, dear Santara. Okay, there's two questions, Chris. Um, and if I may, I'll just read the two of them because they probably yeah. enter, you know, okay. So the, the question is... Um, Dear Chris Mitchell, can you explain to me how the Kundalini can take control over the sexual function? I ask this because I have some difficulties in this area, and I wonder if the Kundalini um, could have something to do with it. And the other question was, is there any risk to either party in having sex when the Kundalini is rising? And what about a new partner? Well, uh, risk. I'm not sure risk is the word that I would use. Um, gift. Is there any possibility that this gift could be given to a person? Yeah. Yeah, if that person's karma uh, and, you know, if, if, their, if their karma is suitable for the kundalini to come, then the kundalini may just go ahead and activate that person. At first, it may be very, very difficult that the possibility exists that uh, that person may find balance and a new, a new outlook on life by virtue of having the kundalini come to them through this the act of, uh, of, of, of sexual tantra, so to speak. And it doesn't, you don't have to like have a big tantric ceremony. You can, just, you can just make love with each other. And one of you is awakened and one of you isn't, and then both of you are awakened. It's, it's really within the purview of the kundalini uh, first. It's the kundalini first. The kundalini decides whether or not that partner that you're making love with is going to be activated. <clears throat> that's the big deal right there is you know you can be with a with the 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 most powerfully kundalini active person in the world whatever that means and then go to bed with them and make love with them and <clears throat> kind of come out going well geez you know that was kind of fast <laughs> you won't feel anything because karmically you're not ready for that yet or energetically you're not ready i mean there's a lot of different ways that we can be not ready. Okay? It's the kundalini that decides whether it will begin itself in that other person. And and so that's one thing that you really want to, to look at. And as far as taking taking control of the sexual life of a person, yeah, absolutely. When you're in the activated and certainly when you're in the awakened state, uh, the kundalini will begin to, the first thing it will do is it controls the energetic anatomy. The second thing it does is it begins to control the, the endocrine system of, of the uh, individual. This includes the, uh, the adrenal glands and, and a lot of the functions of the sexual body. So as, that, as these systems are, are rewired and, and rebirthed with the kundalini, the sex may just leave the person for a, for a period of months, sometimes years. And the person will think, wow, gosh, you know, what happened to me? Jeez Louis, like, you know, I can't have sex. I didn't want sex, I, you know. And, then, and other people will go, gosh, I wish I could have sex. I really, really want sex, but it's just like there's nothing working there. And so it's the kundalini that determines whether or not that individual is going to have sex uh, again. And, and it is the kundalini that uses that sexual energy as a way of furthering the transformation into the divine reality that that the person may be having, certainly within an awakening context, 
uh, you, 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 you save your sexual fluid, men and women. You save your sexual fluids. Uh, you, you don't, you know, spill them on the ground or, or any of that stuff. You, you really, 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 oh, oh, no, just a second here, folks. Uh, and goodbye to you, my dear Julie. Good to read you. Good to see you. Um, you really begin to surrender to the Kundalini's manifestation of control over your sexual life, over your sexual body. You don't resist it. You see, once again, we're back to this whole fountain of youth question. It's like, well, gosh, you know, if I'm a virile person, I should be able to have sex whenever I want, for as long as I want, for however many times I want to have it. And the Kundalini is saying, well, no, no. You're going to have to grow up out of that that immature idea of, of what the energetic anatomy is all about. It's not about how much sperm you can you can you know bring into the world. It's not about how much uh, you know lubricating fluids you can bring into the world. It's far more about how much those components can begin a process of transformation for you via the kundalini into a divine person, into a person that is semi-divine. And so, you know, we don't try to control the You know, don't take the ginsengs because it gives you an erection. Don't, don't do any of these things that, that try to force a libido upon you. Okay? You don't want to force a libido when the kundalini is taking it away. That doesn't make a lot of sense. The Kundalini knows you and your systems better than you know you and your systems. And, and you need to let the Kundalini finish the work that it wants to do. Okay, and that is the basis of, of the, the, uh, the sexual uh, control that the Kundalini will put onto a person. And it looks like I have a question here. There is great healing power in holding this energy, don't you think? Absolutely. There is great healing power within, within the kundalini energy, and it is, it is tremendous. And, and it can work miracles on people with illnesses as long as that illness that they're having, it doesn't have a karmic reason for being there. You know, or if they've already learned and they've already balanced, to say, through the pain or through the adjustment that it, they've had to make, uh, by having the illness, you know, if they're already, uh, if they've already learned those lessons, then those that healing can come very rapidly, very rapidly. Thank you, kind heart. And uh, kind heart is the name of the person who's here. And um, next question, uh, Santara. I would like to know what is meant by calling a Kundalini awakening a spiritual crisis. Certainly, I've had many crises since Kundalini, but I'm told a spiritual crisis causes an awakening. So, so what is meant by a spiritual crisis? Spiritual crisis, basically, uh, it, it, it applies to people that don't know what's happening when the Kundalini comes to them. They don't know that it's Kundalini. They don't know, all they know is that they're having an altered experience. They're having, they're having an experience that is tremendously different from what they were raised with and what they're used to having and their ego is going into severe levels of fear and panic and that s severity of fear and panic uh, will graduate into what what the uh, medical system would call a crisis or a spiritual uh, yeah, a, a, a spiritual crisis and so that's an invitation to a psych ward basically so that's, that's the definition, my dear. Okay. The next question is, is Kundalini the same as when people talk about DNA being reactivated? The what? DNA. Oh, oh yeah, 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 this DNA stuff. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> the DNA knows about Kundalini. So it's, the DNA is never unactivated. The DNA, I mean, you know, the, the life force of a person uh, is, is combined with kundalini and, and prana and chi and all these other different energies mixing together, although the kundalini is the controlling aspect of it. 
the, the DNA and the double strand, you don't need 12 strands, please. Jeez. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, anyway, so yeah, the DNA does not need to be reactivated. The DNA knows when the Kundalini comes in. It knows exactly what to do. It knows how to handle the Kundalini awakening by virtue of, of the Kundalini just, just coming in and the DNA recognizes it and, and follows the the uh, the instruction that it's given from the Kundalini. So you don't need to go to somebody's seminar, buy somebody's book, and you know fantasize about 12 strand DNA or 80 million strand DNA or whatever it is. Uh, you don't need to do that. Your DNA is is perfect just the way it is, and it is able to have the Kundalini just the way it is. Pretty much that's my answer to that, Santara. <laughs> okay. I'm I'm trying to gauge my red and blue as I feel you coming to the end. But I, so here I am. Okay. That was quick. <laughs> okay. Do you know, I've noticed in the groups, Chris, um, people often speak about having issues with the throat chakra. And I know this is a generalization, and I'm not sure if there is any, but, you know, general answer, but does this chakra give people more difficulty than other chakras? People constantly speak about the throat chakra. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's the top chakra for the, for some, you know, it's, it's the highest that the lower chakras get. And in the Asian systems, you know, that is their crown chakra, so to speak. And so, yeah, a lot of blockage can occur there. You have to understand that we block the, the, the throat chakra enough by just refusing to communicate honestly with ourselves. And if we're refusing to communicate honestly with ourselves, that means that the communication that we have with, with other beings of a non-physical nature, we're refusing that. We're refusing to have uh, honest communication with other people that, that have a physical body. I mean, you know, we have to lie in order to survive, so to speak, and and these these lies can compound themselves and form blockages, you know, within the energetic anatomy, and also, you know, through through certain various means, entities can jump in to that fifth chakra and, and begin to block it as well. And so, it's a fairly common event to have a blocked up fifth chakra. And one of the things you can do is Aum A U M U Aum. You can um, and that can help unblock the uh, fifth chakra. You can also say nice things to people. You can sing good music. You can you can verbalize. You can use your throat in ways that are very positive and very uh, validating and beneficial to people. Okay, yeah, you can do that, and that will go a long way to unblocking the fifth chakra. But one of the most important ways is to be honest in your communication with yourself. Don't always buy in to the ego. Don't always buy in to what somebody else is saying to you. Be honest and have the ability to discern your own honesty and the honesty of another person who may be speaking with you. Okay. Thank you, Curtin. Actually, if I may, if it's okay with you, just your owning has reminded me of your CD. May I say something about that now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Um, a lot of you will know, and some of you will not know, that Chrism has a CD of sacred music, Kundalini sacred music. And if people are interested in, in having this, then they can contact myself or Eileen, depending on what part of the world you're living in. If you're in America or Canada, you can contact Eileen. Um, if you're in any other part of the world, you can contact me and we can send you the DVD. There is a donation for this and it is one of the ways that um, you know, a donation can be given as well by, by seeking the CD. And the CD is wonderful because the Shakti Kundalini is in Prism's voice and you can hear it, it goes into your ear, it's just, it's wonderful. So if anybody is interested in that, please do contact me on 
kundalini matters at gmail.com or you can contact me at Suntara on the Facebook um, on Facebook or Eileen Loro if you're in America. And um, for me the donation is twenty dollars and that includes your um your postage. So I, I'm glad that I was able to have the opportunity to do that because I often give out the, um, every week I give out the information where you can make a donation. And this is another way of donating to the Kundalini Awakening Systems and the work that Chrism does. And your owning even there, Chrism, is wonderful. <laughs> um, the next question. Um, is there any reason to question whether it is it really is Kundalini. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, entities can kind of mimic the Kundalini. Entities can come into a person's space and try to, you know, convince that person that uh, they are indeed the Kundalini, and and uh, you know they will they will do their best to lie about it, and and uh, they will do their best to to give people some sort of advice that makes it sound like they are indeed the kundalini and, and it's not it's just not true it is it is uh it is it, it's basically a lie it is basically a lie and and uh, as that person matures within their within their equation they may hopefully begin to discern that that is indeed an untruth and not you know, it is a lie, and the, you know this. This is an entity. Entities usually give themselves away by trying to control the person too much, uh, by trying to give them uh, uh, things to do that are not ethical. Uh, try to put them in harm's way or put other people in harm's way. Uh, that's the uh, the general uh, modus operandi of an entity, of a spiritual entity. Um, another another uh, thing that they'll do is is, is talk badly to you, tell you that you're weak, tell you that you're a moron, tell you that, that you're worthless, that you should just commit suicide, and da 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 And so they'll, they'll also try to say, and they'll say, oh, you know, you know, they lie. They just lie, 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 and lie. And, and so you need to be very discerning about what the Kundalini is. The Kundalini will never have you hurt another person. It will never go out of its way to devalue who you are. It will never have you do things that are unethical. It knows your ethical boundaries, and it will not have you do them, Okay. And so, yeah, you can question the Kundalini or question whether or not you have the Kundalini. And, and you also have to look at, at where you are when you're questioning this. Are you on a group? Are you, who are you reading? What are you reading? What are you investing your time into? What are you investing your, your, your Kundalini education in? Is, this a, you know, is it a religious guru? Is it a, a religious organization? Is it a... You know, people who are who are interested in some facet of, of say, star seeding or Wicca or you know, how are are are, are people being manipulated? I mean, you know, what's going on in in your uh, uh, spiritual evolutionary environment? What's happening to you, and why? And what are your responses? And what are the responses of the people around you? You can begin to discern an environment that is conducive of high ethical standards and high kundalini resonance or not. And so I encourage you to question whether or not you're having the kundalini and then, you know, look at your symptoms and look at what is happening to you and then make your own discernment based upon that level of information. Chris, and do some entities, you know, when you're speaking about entities there, sometimes, you know, maybe it's not, maybe they don't, you know, push you to do things that are unethical. Do do some entities come and not do that for quite a while until they have? Yeah, yeah, they're reached. Yeah, cool. like I had a guy come to a seminar, and he'd been on one of my groups for like two years, and uh, he was he was so full of entities. I mean, they were so controlling of him. He barely had a chance to breathe on his own, and he came to a seminar. He knew all, you know, he knew about the safeties. He knew about the language that I talk. You know, he knew how to, he knew how to talk the talk, but the entities wouldn't let him walk that talk. And so, you know, he basically tried to hijack the entire seminar. And, uh, you know, 
he did. I mean, his entities were able to be spread into at least I know one other, possibly two other people that were there. And, and uh, yeah, it was not it was not a happy not a happy time for me. Now I'm very very much aware of what's going on in that level, and uh, and I trust the Kundalini. The, you know, Kundalini gave everybody a good teaching there, and uh, and, and so we go forward from there. But yeah, they can. They can, shall we say, nest inside a person, mm. just waiting for that right moment to jump out and start to to uh, corrupt a person's kundalini. Okay, thanks, Krizan. There is actually kind heart in the uh, chat room has a question connected to the previous one. It says, is it possible that our activated kundalini energy can activate our partner and bring things that need to be healed or dealt with to the surface for them. Well, that's assuming that the person uh, maybe bring people bring issues to the surface for both of them, but maybe not just one. Right? I mean, we're are we making the assumption that the person that has the kundalini is just absolutely perfect and has no problems and is and is so good and so full of grace that they make no mistakes and they have no assumptions and they have no ego expectations, you know, within that whole thing? Or, you know, maybe they also have something to learn about tolerance and patience and honesty and things like that. So, but it is possible, yes, for the kundalini. And you don't even need to have sex with them for that. You just need to be in their general proximity for the kundalini to start bringing things in for both partners to learn, for sure. Okay. Um, people talk about the Kundalini being the ultimate goal or achieving certain levels of consciousness. So I wanted to ask, is that the goal or path on the path to enlightenment? What's that? Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I obviously took that question down badly. Um, people always talk about Kundalini being the ultimate goal or achieving certain levels of consciousness. So I wanted to ask you, is that the goal on the path to enlightenment? Is Kundalini yes. maybe the goal? Yeah? Yes, yes, absolutely. Without a doubt. Jesus had Kundalini. Um, Apollonius of Tyre had Kundalini. St. Saint, Saint John of the Cross, I mean... Uh, St. Francis of Assisi, uh, St. Philip of of Neri, St. Giles, St. Teresa of Avila, uh, St. Hildegard, they all had kundalini. Buddha had kundalini. Okay. So, yeah, kundalini is, is the goal. And then the goals change after you have the kundalini. Hello. Okay. <laughs> I'm gauging the pause. <laughs> are you going to continue or are you finished? <laughs> okay. Um, and I'm also scrolling down through my questions, and I and I think that might be it. Um. Yes, there is another one here that says, "What does the term awakening mean?" What does it mean? Yeah. It means that Kundalini has come into a person and it has awakened their true nature. It has awakened themselves to the true nature of the universe and of the and don't worry, uh kind heart, I will get to your question there. Um it means that they have awakened to the truth that is beyond the, the veil. It is it, you know, it is an awakening. It is a a, a awakening from mundane life. Okay. Okay. Let me let me let me speak to kind heart. Uh, what do the goals change to after Kundalini is activated? Okay, the goals change into surrendering to the Kundalini rather than surrendering to your ego. The goals change uh, from, you know, maybe not having the highest ethics to having supremely high ethics. The goals change from. Uh, being totally identified with the human body and all of a sudden being identified with the divine body, which isn't strictly physical. 
So there are many, many goal changes that occur after a Kundalini is activated. And as we're talking about an activation, uh, the goals change in an activated state towards building the energetic anatomy to the point where it can have that spinal sweep that we talked about at the beginning of the program. Yes. Okay. So there's, there's another question. With regard to Kundalini, what can I do to push this forward? Or is this just a process that I need to wait out? I meditate daily and I'm really trying to connect, sorry, and really am trying to make all things meditation, regardless of how mundane they are. I connect with nature daily and ground and center and shield throughout the day as well, even when indoors. I would appreciate any suggestions because I am ever so desirous to be back with the all so completely again. So the question is then, do, what can I do to push this forward, or is it a process that I need to wait out? Well, you can practice the safeties, and that helps bring it forward. I don't like to use the word push. I don't think people should ever push the kundalini. Just let the kundalini push you. Uh, but you can do the safeties, which... Am I getting this echo from you all of a sudden, Amelia? I'm going to put you in the room. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you, you don't want to push the kundalini. You want to allow the kundalini to push you, but it may be pushing you towards the safety, the safety protocols. It may be pushing you towards uh, doing a greater level of meditation, a greater level of yoga, a greater level of selfless service for other people, a greater level of compassion, a greater level of forgiveness within yourself, a greater level of, 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 of surrendering into grace rather than holding on to control mechanisms over grace. You don't want to try to control the divine. The divine is not really needing your help in any given way. The only, the only thing that the, the divine would like you to do really is to, is to surrender the control that your ego has over your actions and thoughts and begin to, to look into having a divine purpose and a divine strength behind that divine purpose. This really is is where we're we're being pointed at with regards to a kundalini awakening event. Uh, it is it is to be guided by the inner divine, and in some ways to be guided by the inner divine towards an exterior teacher such as myself or another person that your kundalini may guide you towards. Um, it's all about trusting the divine within you and following that guidance, those, that, that feeling of being compelled to do a certain thing. It's all about that. Let that guide you. Let that be your, your mechanism of, of understanding uh, the kundalini process that you're in. It is not about you controlling anything. It's not about you pushing anything. The only thing that you really need to push yourself to do is to get off that couch and, and do, you know, the five Tibetans. Do the alternate nostril breathing. Do the compression prayers. Do, you know, these types of activities. And for those of you that are private students, do the Tritaka. Do the devotion. Make the attempt. And even even when my schedule gets screwed up like it did today, and I apologize to everybody who was affected that way, continue, use the picture, do the devotion with the picture. You know what I'm talking about. Remember that Kundalini, you know, going back to one of the other questions, Kundalini is the ultimate power over the student. Kundalini assigns a teacher to the student. Pay attention to what that teacher is asking you to do. Pay attention and, 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 and practice those instructions. Let them guide you on your path. That's the reason why you even have a teacher at all. Let those instructions guide you on your path. Let the kundalini in you guide you on your path. This is the ultimate goal that we have as being uh, spirits in a body, conscious humanity so to speak and i can see that we're coming up to the end of our show for today i would like to to thank everybody 
for participating in the show. I'd like to thank Elizabeth Dalton Gajal, Gonzalez, Fasci, Guest 2091, and Guest 2258, and MJ Henderson, Suka, who is typing. Anuj, hello, Anuj, I didn't see you. Welcome, Anuj. 411 and kind heart, everybody is typing. <laughs> Suka has There's a, a question there, yeah. Does the goddess you Kali mean? have a connection with Kundalini? Had some strong experience with this black colored goddess last week when I look at her picture, I start shaking. Uh, Kali is, is more of the warrior aspect of the Kundalini, um, you know, the don't tread on me type of thing. And and you go ahead and stare at her picture if you want, but also, you know, stare at any other picture of the, of the of the Shakti Kundalini and see if that also begins to balance out for you. And don't get addicted to the shaking or any kind of uh, manifestation or phenomena. You know, find some balance. Don't go for just for Cali. You know, this world is not made just for people that are that are you know, you know, in the warrior end of things. You don't need to be to be so so single pointed with that uh, you can reach into peace you can reach into serenity you can reach into the grace of, of ahimsa and nonviolence as well and i have no teacher i have to trust myself and follow my kundalini well there you go kind heart uh interesting that you're here listening to what i have to say and then you say i have no teacher Maybe you have a teacher, at least for this afternoon. And what else? Is there other people that are posting here? Uh, oh, no, okay. All right. Well, everybody, thank you. Thank you for, for listening, and thank you to, to those of you in the archives who have listened. I want to send you my blessings, my love, my appreciation for your attention. And I would like to thank... Uh, uh, Santara, Amelia Santara, Eileen Laurel, Rosemary Goliath, and everybody who is is putting on a seminar and coming to a seminar or doing what they can do to spread this information around. I'd really like each and every one of you to to send this to a different network on the inter- on the internet. Really, let's get this information out there. People do not need to be left in the dark because they don't know. The truth. Let's let's let the truth light up their soul. Uh, Santara, would you like to say good night? Good night, everybody, and we will see you next week again. Looking forward to it already. Good night, everybody in the chat room and in the archives, and good night, Chrism, and all of you listening live. And good night uh, to all of you that are there in the chat room and listening in the archives, and Amelia. And, and uh, Eileen and Rosemary Fasci, uh, Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez, the two guests that we have, Suka, Anuj, and Kindhearts. Thank you all for listening. Good night.